Welcome back to another video guys. Here we have a pair of Technics 1200 Mark IIs dropped off by my customer James. James is also the same customer that dropped off the 1210 Mark IIs that were on the last video that were in absolutely horrific condition. I'll give you all an update on that in just a minute. Let's start off with these. So James, your turntables are ready to rock and roll. Obviously the flickering, if you can see this on the video, I don't know if it's gonna, you're gonna see this once it's been uploaded. The flickering is the camera, I say this all the time. But it is the camera. But either way, the operation base on these, stripped down, deep cleaned, buttons deep cleaned and polished. We've refreshed all of the LEDs on both turntables. So the strobe LEDs, four LEDs in here, they've been replaced. 33 and 45 LEDs replaced, as well as new tactile switches within the operation base. SMD, so warm white SMD output on the pop-ups, all custom made by myself. Towers are all original and all polished. The surrounds of the towers for the pop-ups also polished. New pitch trims, new pitch slider units, new undershader felt underneath the plinth on both turntables, new rectangular felt underneath the pitch knob. Arm assemblies are both completely stripped down and rebuilt. Bearings are absolutely fine on these turntables. Pivots machine polished. Threads deep cleaned, re-greased, all fully rebuilt, working exactly as you would expect. The tubes on these are in very nice condition for originals. Socket caps polished, socket pins all polished, if we can make that out on the camera or not, but they're lovely and clean. A few battle scars on the edges of these turntables, but overall a very, very nice pair of Technics. This is what we like to see, Technics that have actually been used, but also looked after. I get a lot of these that come through and they just look like they've spent 50 years in the room engine room of the Titanic, you know? It's nice to have a pair in that have actually been looked after. The bases on these are in really nice condition. The feet, as per usual, have all been machine polished and so are nice and shiny. We've got custom made audio cables, grounding and grounding cables. Power cables on these decks are actually the originals and they're in extremely good condition with no nasty breaks or anything. So, ain't broke, don't touch it. Simple as that. Custom slip mats, as you can also see as well. There we are. So we should we move over to the other workbench, one of my other workbenches, and show you these nasty 1210s from the previous video and show you the outcome so far as to what's been going on. So give me just a second. I'm going to pause the video, walk over to the other workbench, and show you what we're working with. Here we go. So the, they're looking a little bit healthier than they were before. So the first thing I need to make everybody aware of, and this is actually quite funny, after I finished the video, I stripped down both of these turntables and the very first job I proceed to do after stripping everything down, including the trims, the shader felt, everything, is give the plimps a good clean. I've been using the same solution on every single plimp for nearly 11 years now with no issues whatsoever. There's no nasty chemicals in there that can cause any problems, no minimal alcohol, there's nothing on them. And the very first thing that happened, the graphics for the pitch and the Technics graphic itself completely smudged on one turntable and wiped off clean on the other. Now I have never had this happen, ever. Ever had this happen in nearly 11 years. So I called my customer up and explained the situation. He laughed, I laughed as well as, as you all know what I'm like. And uh, yeah, he decided to go with a vinyl wrap because we could have put new graphics on, but the decks themselves were in a really poor condition, even with a clean. It, cleaning was not really gonna help anything. So we decided to go with a wrap. The very popular carbon fiber vinyl made another appearance of 3M carbon fiber. You're never gonna beat this as far as I'm concerned. It's all textured and looks fantastic once installed correctly with the correct orientation. Um, yeah, so the wrap is now on. You'll see there's no graphics on these turntables as of yet, that's because I haven't installed them obviously. But we've gone for blue LEDs all over as well. Again, we were gonna keep everything you know, red and just update everything on here. But no, we decided to go with blue purely for the fact that they're being wrapped. So the wrap's now down. They've got new pitch trims. We've got new pitch slider units. We've got a new under shader felt on both turntables. Rectangular felt underneath the knob itself. The actual knobs, as you can see, they're very shiny because I've actually polished these. There was so much surface rubbish on these. I had to polish them. There was no other alternative. They do look good. I mean, the outcome is very, very good whenever I do polish these. But if you want to keep things as original as possible, it's going to cost you even more money replacing the actual knobs. And considering the age of these, and I'll show you the platters in a second, but considering the age of these and what was needed, it's good to keep the cost down. And if they look good after the event, then you know it makes things worthwhile. Talking of that, 
the pop-ups. Now, what I had to do with these, if you look at the actual towers, you'll see they're almost a, pretty much a mirrored finish. I had to machine polish both of these towers so much that it's mirrored them. Now, I'm actually very, very happy with the end result of both of these. To be fair, they come out extremely clean and very, very, very shiny. So I'm sure my customer's gonna be over the moon when he sees this, but they were so bad, I had to completely strip them down and just start from scratch. Nice little solution if you have got really horrific surrounds on your pop-ups. You can buy replacements. There's a few people on eBay that do them, for an example, if you're in the UK, um, just to get them going again, but they're not going to be as shiny as the original. So it's always good to, you know, refurb something that's original, especially if it's part on the turntable. So the arm assemblies, everything's stripped down and rebuilt, polished pivots, all the usual. When stripping these both down, one of the arm assemblies was absolutely fine with the bearings, but this particular one here top bearing and bottom bearing units were completely destroyed. The bottom bearing was so bad that the actual, the plate and everything was there for the housing of the bearing, but the ball bearings weren't actually inside the housing. When I took everything apart, there was lots of little ball bearings all inside the, um, the rubber base, just sitting there moving around. So we needed to replace both of the bearings, but one for top, one for bottom. We've now got a fully working arm again. The tubes, as you'll all remember from the previous video, one of the tubes was bent, it was this turntable. This is the one that needed the replacement bearings. So we've replaced the tube on this one and the other turntable. Very important to bear this in mind, guys. If you bring turntables to me and you've only got one arm that's badly bent, you really do need to consider replacing both tubes. This is not a sales ploy in any way, shape or form. But if you imagine you've got two turntables, one's got severe damage, you're going to change over that tube and it'll be sod's law that you change, you change it over and it'll be a negligible height difference between the one that hasn't been changed and the one that has. Normally it's higher on the one that you've changed. So it is highly recommended that you replace both tubes over if you are going to need a new tube on one. Now, these dodgy looking bags are actually what these tubes come in. Now, they're not genuine Technics units, Panasonic units. Panasonic never sold the tubes on their own. You had to buy an entire assembly. So what you used to be able to buy before the prices skyrocketed and they stopped making them was the socket, the wiring with the end cap for the socket, the tube, um, with obviously the support section here made out of plastic, bearings, pivots, gimbal, and the support bracket. So you'd basically buy the entire assembly, you'd desolder the arm wires, unscrew two screws, whole thing lifts out, new one in, screw it in, solder the wires, and you're away. Now this is one of the reasons why you'd see, if you do look on eBay for an example, you've probably seen this in clubs or even with your friends' turntables, when they needed repairing, it was cheaper to pop a 1200 assembly on a 1210. So you're actually gonna see a lot of 1210s with silver assemblies on them for exactly that reason. There is no difference between how they work. It is simply just the color because 1200s being silver and 1210s being black. But the 1210 assemblies were always more expensive. And then obviously the price hikes, everything all went up in price. Then you couldn't buy them anymore. And the only option you've got now, if you want to go for a genuine unit, is say for an example, the Mark 7 arms or the 1500 arms, and you're looking at a lot of money. I mean, to, to supply a pair of Mark 7 arm assemblies to fit on these bases, you are looking the best part of two and a half hundred pound per arm. It's not cheap. So unless you've got 500 pound basically sitting there spare, then you've got to spend the rest of the amount of money that you would have spent on servicing, wrap and everything else on top. You've got to start thinking, is it really worth me going down this route? This is the cheaper solution. So we've replaced the tubes and replaced the bearings top and bottom on here. Now, one thing I will add, especially with myself, I charge a flat fee for say servicing and custom work for wraps, etc. If you're having everything stripped down, okay, to access the plimp to vinyl wrap, to strip the arm down, to deep clean it, if everything is already stripped down, I'm not gonna charge labor fees or anything to replace a tube, let's be honest, because you've already got the tube out of the deck, including the socket and everything, to give it a thorough clean and obviously rebuild. So why, I don't understand why people are charging money to install these further to the charges they're already offering because you've already got the turntable in bits you know to put the part in so i don't charge anything additional even even labor for installing the art the actual bearings if you've got your turntables booked in with me 
and you do need bearings and I call you and say, right, this is this is the score. You need a bearing. You might need one bearing or two, you know, Mac, worst case scenario, two top and bottom. You've got left and right as well for the up and down movement. Very rare that I see them damaged, but it's usually for left and right. It is the up and down. Be um, it's the top and bottom bearing units. So if you've got your turntables in with me and I call you and say they're needed, I'll give you a price for the bearings. And it's not as expensive as you think, guys. It really isn't. But if you're expecting absolute precision movement all the way across without using the anti-scape, as in nothing other than the zero, then you are going to need to be looking at the arm assemblies, That unfortunately. But this is a cheap alternative than spending two and a half hundred pound for a new arm. Not everybody can afford it, and I totally appreciate it. And most DJs I speak to are more than happy with the fact that it works, it tracks, and as long as there's no skipping or jumping when you're queuing or scratching, you're more than happy. And that's the main thing. Okay, not everyone can afford two and a half hundred pound per deck. So yeah, it's much cheaper, much, much cheaper. The one thing that really does let these turntables down, as you can probably all see from the very beginning when I actually did move the camera over here, is the platter on both of these turntables. They are in extremely bad condition. In an ideal world, they need to be completely stripped of all of the surface paint that's on there, polished up to within an inch of their life, sprayed a flat black, and then gone back over in a lathe just to get the surface back off. This is more cost involved with doing this, and it simply is not an option with these turntables. The best person to speak to within the UK to refurbish platters, if you are looking to have this done, because I'm asked this on a regular basis if I do refurb the platters, would actually be Sam over at Pimp My Decks. I mentioned him quite a few times. So Sam is a very good friend of mine, and he is definitely the man for the job within the UK. Outside of the UK, you've got Leon Riches, actually, funny enough. Leon's a fantastic engineer of what he does, builds things from the ground up, and he offers a full, re a full restoration of platters as well. So there's two options for you, Leon Riches and um, Sam over at Pimp My Decks if you're in the UK. But I do not get involved with refurbing platters. I just do not do it. So we've wrapped the tops here as well. They weren't in a fantastic condition on edges neither. So this is a good way of hiding issues and things that are here so we can key things up and pop protective vinyl over the top. You can't see anything because it's so thick because it's textured and just looks a lot better. When the slip mats are on, it doesn't really matter, but this just stops anything that's on the platter from catching your slip mat as well and further damaging the underneath of the slip mat. You know, it's a nice little alternative. But there we go. So usual thing with this as well. Feet have obviously been polished as you can all see. The cables are all running down the front at the moment because so we've got them loose underneath the bottom of the workbench. But the feet have all been polished. The bases have obviously cleaned up quite well. Actually really well to be honest. Compared to how they were before. New pitch, new shaders, all the usual bits there. Blue pop-ups, SMD pop-ups. Blue in the 33 and 45 and the strobe. Uh, operation base stripped down, tactile switches obviously replaced on both turntables, main boards both serviced, they're all different parts that were needed on these turntables but it's just the natural thing that you have to do as part of a service. Thermal paste for an example, a couple of resistors that were needed, some bowing caps that were needed to be replaced, um, what else have we got? The resistance obviously needed to be changed on the LEDs so we don't want them too bright or anything so we've changed that as well on the main board. Same thing goes for James's turntables funny enough. Obviously, you replaced all of the LEDs. You've got to change the resistance. Really important. Otherwise, you have to wear sunglasses. There's no other way around it. And I'm not a particular massive fan of these ultra-bright LEDs. You need to change the resistance to get them at their full potential of how they should look. And that is pretty much where we're at at the moment. So they're looking a hell of a lot more healthier than they were initially when they were dropped off. It's a few little things I need to go around and sort on these just to finish off the vinyl wrap absolutely spot on. But for now, the bases are all loosely put back together until I've done my final checkovers. But we need the graphics installed. Just go over the wrap, make sure I'm happy. Make sure the arms are tracking exactly as they should. I've already done a pre-test on these when I run it for a power supply, a bench power supply. And it is running true with no nasty audio interference or anything on from the cables. So the main issue as well with these originally, the cables, as you all saw, were um, quick fit connectors that simply screwed over the actual wire itself. They weren't the best, that's all been changed now. And the audio issues now have been completely resolved with my audio cables, so custom audio cables and new power cables on these. And obviously once these are finished, I'll do an update video, give you all the, the total look over on the end result. But considering the state of these, with the amount of chips and scuffs and things they had, this vinyl has gone down rather well indeed. 
and I'm very, very happy with the end result or the, the results so far. I say we're pretty much 95% complete. And yeah, once they're finished, I'll do another video. But keep your eyes on the page, everyone. Thanks ever, thanks ever so much for everyone that watches these on a regular basis. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And yeah, any questions about anything, feel free to send me over a message by the contact form on the website as the comments have been disabled, as we're all aware by now. Go on justtechnics.co.uk and send us over a message. But one thing I do need to bear in mind, any technical questions on how to repair something or say for an example, which LEDs I use for the SMDs, you know, what LEDs do I use for the pitch and where do I get this, where do I get that? I do not give this information. I do not sell parts. And with the greatest of respect, all sorts of people watch these videos and I do not want anybody attempting to do this themselves and causing problems with their turntables if they're not experienced. So I will not tell you where, you know, where, what the specific parts are that I use. All I will say is this, if you're in the UK, you ought to be going on to DJ Spares, a company called DJ Spares. Type it in on Facebook, you'll find it, a black and white logo of a turntable. Kevin over at DJ Spares will hook you up with just about everything that you need to get your turntables running as they should. So things like, he does full pop-up uh, units themselves that you can simply solder in, mine are custom made. So I don't use them myself. I do on the odd occasion, if people request them. Pitch controls, DJ spares. You can buy PCBs for the operation base. You can buy the PCBs for the pitch control. You can buy internally grounded boards for the tone arm unit. You can buy standard style boards as well, PCBs. So you can replace them over. There's all different things you can, you can buy there, including spindle oil as well. I'm asked by that quite a lot. So definitely worth checking out if you're in the UK. Outside of the UK, Technics 1200s or 1200s.com. Christian over at 1200s.com will definitely look after you. There's plenty, and I mean plenty of parts there to keep you going probably till the next millennium, guys. So have a look at both of those sites. And we'll leave it there. Thanks ever so much for watching, and I'll see you on the next video.